Welcome, Devaney. <laughs> Welcome to Arizona State University. Welcome, with you. Here we are. <laughs> Hey, to be welcomed by you is the greatest treat, uh, but we should be the ones welcoming you, of course. So, Me Metropolitan, your first film. Yes. The Academy Award nomination for the <clears throat> screenplay. I know lots of people who continue to talk regularly about the Lionel Trilling, Mansfield Park essay, the way that Mansfield Park um, seems to inspire that film. I even I read one review recently that says Jane Austen is almost a character in Metropolitan. How would you, how would you characterize a response well, to that? It was a big help. This is the first screenplay. I had no idea whether I'd get to the end of it when I was writing it. I had no idea if it would work at all. I was very scared of the whole process mm -hmm. and whether I had enough you know, useful material. And one thing that's really important in dialogue comedies is you have things to talk about that there are other people who know what you're talking about. And in the film Last Days of Disco, we took <clears throat> Disney films. Mm -hmm. So they debate about Lady and the Tramp, um, Bambi, uh, Uncle Scrooge, because all over the world people recognize these things. In um, Love and Friendship, they talk a lot about the Bible, Bible characters, mm -hmm. the commandments, things like that. <clears throat> and um, in Metropolitan, um, there's a debate about a Lionel Trilling essay about uh, Jane Austen's Massa Park. So there's a focus on Mansfield Park and Jane Austen. And um, it is not an adaptation um, of Mansfield Park. I don't think you can say it's inspired by Mansfield Park, but I think there's sort of three props from Mansfield Park helping the story. So there is this debate about <clears throat> the point of view <clears throat> of this very sort of nonfiction sensibility of the guy, the sort of socialist Tom Townsend who doesn't read fiction, he only reads the criticism. And then um, uh, Audrey Rouget, who, who loves the books and really appreciates the books and, and reads them and knows them. And, you know, the debate between their sensibilities. And then um, the sort of comedy of his misinterpretation of, uh, of the novel from the essay. And then her defending Jane Austen, how she defends Jane Austen, how he deprecates Jane Austen. And then, <clears throat> inspired by that, um, there's the idea of the virtuous heroine. Um, one of the things Lionel Trilling points he makes in the beginning of his essay is that in, in modern circumstances, we can't have a virtuous heroine, which she really rejects and I reject. And then the other thing is the, the sort of plot, see, the plot um, moment in Mansfield Park is her defending something that seems indefensible. Mm -hmm. It's her uncle's prohibition of them, the young people, putting on amateur private theatricals in his great house. Her point is that he is he is their host. She's the impoverished niece who's being allowed to stay with this family and often made to feel her poverty and her social right. inferiority. Right. But still, she's, she's being um, housed and fed and clothed by this family. And she's grateful to them. And he has a rule against this. And even though he's not there, she feels the rule stands, and they have to respect his rule, even though he's not there. Well, his children and the, and the visiting uh, young people um, say, no, no, we should. It's nonsense. We'll just do this. And then in this story of Metropolitan, they want to do the game Truth or Dare, where you have to answer questions completely honestly. And she says, no, that we shouldn't play this game. It's really dangerous. Uh, the, our modern character. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, an indefensible, defending an indefensible prohibition that actually has a lot of sense behind it because there's a reason why people don't reply to questions with absolute honesty and candor because they can hurt a lot of people and cause a lot of trouble. A lot of things should not be told. It's a beautiful scene. And then it isolates her in the group and then there's the loyal fellow who likes her who comes to her aid and the other guy who's kind of obtuse about it. And so there are these three or four things that helped us in, helped me in the screenplay of Metropolitan, but it doesn't make it an adaptation. 